Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we're having a look at how to make a spiral staircase. Something I was playing around with Fusion the other day and I couldn't quite figure out. So I turned to YouTube and found these two methods that I thought were quite nice. So I decided to put them together with my take in one video. So I've got this one where I've used the pattern tool a number of times and you can see here there's a whole bunch of bodies. Um, and we've just selected the correct ones to make this. And then we've got this other spiral staircase, if it'll load, there we go, which uses the sheet metal workspace. So we've manipulated a piece of sheet metal to give us that. So follow along, see how you go, and hope you enjoy the video. So to start with this first method, I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane. So create sketch, select the top plane, and we will go with a center diameter circle. I'll draw that out to 1.25 meters. I have a look at a couple of staircases, and that's a, maybe an average. Um, then we'll do a line going up vertically. Now I will do a circular pattern of this line because I need to have little segments here that go all the way around I think it was 12, yes 12 is what I'm looking for so then we'll finish sketch now I'm going to extrude one of these to 200 so if we look at an angle there we've got our one little segment what I want to do now is have all those segments back. I could have individually uh, extruded each of those, the ones that I drew, but that's a bit time consuming, so I'll just repeat the pattern. So there we've got one whole pattern. Now we need to stack these on top of each other. To do that, we'll use a rectangular pattern. I'll go ahead and select that, and the axis is any axis going vertically so let's make that 2000 so we're going to need to increase the number so we can close that gap between them I mean you could have less copies if you wanted your gaps to be or wanted to have little gaps between your steps but this one I am just having like this so that they're all touching now if we look at the bodies, we've got well over 100 bodies here, and we don't want that necessarily. So we're just going to select the ones we're looking for. We can start anywhere on this. Oh, I forgot to hold control, so hold command, and make sure you are holding command, or else it'll deselect the ones you're trying to add almost there now I'm going to go to combine and combine these into one body let's keep the tools so we're into bodies now we need to figure out which one of these is the one with all the steps in it. So you see it highlight there we go, body nine. So I'm gonna rename that staircase so that I've got it. And then I want to make all those other ones hidden. So I will hide this and select these and right click. and hide now there's some on the other side that weren't selected so again select right click hide okay so there's nothing there i want to activate this again we can see all that we're left with is our little staircase which is what we're looking for so now i'm going to create a sketch on the top plane maybe 
a center diameter circle. Drag it out, let's make that 200. And finish sketch. Then we can just extrude this up um, and draw in operation. Okay. And that's our first staircase. Um, there's a lot more you could do if you wanted to add in a handrail or something like that. But just, just as a starting point, that is one way to make a spiral staircase. Now is open up a different tab. Um, this one we're actually going to be working in sheet metal. So I'm going to start off in, in solid, create a sketch on the top plane. It's going to be a center diameter circle. So starting off very similar to the first one. Here's where it differs. I'm just going to create a line there. I need to cut out the piece of the circumference of this circle. So I can draw my line sort of anywhere and then dimension this I'm going to say cut out 10 degrees, so now I can trim this little bit. And then I need to have a little piece going up here. You'll see why now. Because I'm going to turn this into sheet metal and you'll just need a straight edge that we can use as the stationary component so we can unfold it. So I'm going to go and select the whole thing and 2000. So let's side on view. There we've got this thing that looks almost like a tunnel. Um, now we've got this flat edge. The, the reason we needed that is so when we go in here, unfold, I can't select a stationary entity from a curved edge. I have to select the flat edge and then it'll unfold the bends. I'll say unfold all bends so that this bend is unfolded as well. And there we go, that's that's the start of it. What I'm gonna do now is, see that little piece? That's the part that is used to make the curve and then that's the straight edge. I'm gonna draw a line, so I'll create a sketch on this plane. I'm gonna create a line from this corner Seems like my computer's lagging a little bit. Right up to the top corner. This line is important because we're going to use it as our axis for when we pattern just now. So I want to make these stairs the same sort of dimensions as the last ones, just with a few gaps between them. So I'm doing a rectangle, snapping onto this and going to be 200 high and I will make it 250 deep. So that is my reference. What I want to do now is do another rectangle, this time turn off construction lines and make it 50. I didn't actually need to do the construction but anyway. Um, what I want to do is actually get rid of them. So last time I had some issues when I was trying to extrude it or select it, it was just selecting a construction. So now I've got that part that I want to now do a pattern on. So I'll go create a rectangular pattern. The object will be these four lines obviously don't want the construction lines included that's maybe why I should have left out construction lines but there we go direction will be the line that we drew there and the extent will be all the way to the top so you, you could measure it out make sure it's exact but for me that's close enough um, and now we just got to figure out how many steps we need. So obviously you can't take a step that big, so we'll just add in steps until they more or less 
in line 30 near there maybe have a little bit of overlap but that looks good so now we've got steps and we can finish a sketch and extrude so we'll select each of these profiles and we can extrude them to 50 no it's not 250 that's a tiny stair um, I think it was 500 so that's a bit better we'll, we'll go 600 I just don't want them to touch in the middle because when I tried this previously it gave me an error when I tried to refold it okay so you see what it does off when it gets to the center it starts cutting off and clipping so that's what it looks like we've got this sort of tower with stairs in it but I want to go back and unfold this so unfold again we select the stationary edge unfold all bends so we could have done this in one shot without refolding but, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like what we're going to do now is create a sketch on this plane so we could have done it with the first sketch but We'll do it this way. Um, I want this line to be run parallel, so I'm just going to make this a construction line. There we go. Computer is very laggy today. I'm going to draw another line this time. This is going to be a line we use to cut. So it doesn't need to have any specific dimension so long as it's covering the entire area. But I'm quite fond of putting in um, constraints. I just love the way they it just straighten something up. So now this one that's important is the parallel, which is why I drew that line. And it's over there it's not fully constrained because I haven't put in dimensions for these the only dimension that I'm really wanting to do is sort of make sure that this is um, running off of there so let me make this point in line with that step and in this dimension we can make that 200 okay so now it's going to cut that whole section out I want to repeat this whole thing, the line tool, this time I'll make it in line with that. So again, you just kind of make sure it's more or less covering, covering the right area. And then we can go ahead and add our dimensions. And then again, the parallel either select this one or that one now now this has gone out what I want to do is add that horizontal constraint in again shift that line up and then dimension from this point to that point point. Um, we had a 200 we can just keep it 200 maybe let's make it 300 we just got a big bit of a bigger lip now we finish the sketch what you'll see now actually i should draw that down to cut away that little lip i'm just going to go back in here quick and line tool over here where it meets this point Or a vertical line. Now this bit doesn't really matter, but I like things to line up. Okay, so finish sketch. Now we're gonna extrude. So we'll select all these profiles and minus ten. It should be a cut operation. Now we've left with this. This looks like a normal staircase. 
refold the faces. And it's not working, so let's just undo that, cut and see if, okay. So, what I'll do now is, let's just try and remove these faces. I'll leave that one in there. Maybe it needs that little edge. Now let's try refold. Okay, yeah, so it needed that stationary edge that we folded on. We've got our staircase there. Same as we did the last one, we're gonna create a sketch now on the top plane. And we're gonna put in our center diameter circle. We'll make that 200, like I did with the last one. And finish sketch. Then when we extrude, Select that, go up, join, and then it should be in line with that top thing. Let's get a side view, nope. Okay. So there we go, we've got another spiral staircase. Now if you wanted to, you could put this into your solid um, profile or your solid workspace and you can start doing things like cutting away at that or maybe thickening this so one thing you can see if we left this a bit higher this top cut and run we could have had a little balcony there or well, not a balcony a handrail but there's here's another way to do a spiral staircase i was looking at this and actually thinking i'd like to maybe try do a, a double helix dna strand that's something i've thought about i haven't really tried it so maybe i'll use this technique to do that but there are two different ways to do a spiral staircase hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe leave a comment down in the comment section you can get in touch with me at fusionfundamentals at gmail.com my email is in the description hope you enjoyed the video until next time bye